Good evening. Tonight we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time and are celebrating the Father Feast. Reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Tumen, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. She said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered yes, 
She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be found a baby son. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. I speak to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'm sure you can remember a time when you visited a family and you were made to feel very much at home. You were given a warm greeting at the door when you arrived, and because in the winter time there was a warm blazing fire to welcome you, and then you were served a nice drink with appetizers and followed by a delicious meal. Or during the summer you would meet on the deck we had a chance to share stories and enjoy one another's company. But you left feeling relaxed and enriched because of the hospitality and the warm welcome that was extended to you. In ancient times, hospitality was considered a sacred duty. And we have many examples of those who lived out this value in their lives like the couple in the first reading that we've just heard today, who asked the prophet Elisha to dine with them, and when he had done so a few times, they extended their hospitality in furnishing a little room where he could stay with them for a few days. The woman's hospitality was rewarded when she, who was childless, was told that in a year she would have a child. Hospitality meant a great deal to the Jewish people because they themselves were exiles in Egypt and they never forgot that experience and went out of their way to see that the stranger was welcomed and fed. Hospitality was seen as a work of mercy as well as a means of witnessing to the faith. Jesus was a welcoming, hospitable person. And he taught us how welcoming God is. He had room in his heart for all kinds of people. He made a special effort to reach out to sinners and to those on the fringes of society. That is something the religious leaders of the day didn't do. Focus on rules and regulations, they excluded certain people from the synagogue and the temple and considered them unclean. They shunned tax collectors and public sinners. But Jesus, on the other hand, had a welcoming heart, always widening the circle of love to include others, always reaching out to heal and to reconcile. 
No doubt he had read about the woman in our first reading for today who extended herself so generously to the prophet in providing him with food and lodging. Now, our hospitality to others may not be in the form of a meal or a bed for the night, although it could be. But it means, above all, opening our hearts to those who are different from us. That our circle of love would include those who perhaps dress differently, who come from other faith traditions and racial backgrounds. Some of the things hospitality doesn't welcome are snobbery, or prejudice, or hate. Hospitality can also be shown in giving a cup of water to another. Now the cup of cold water, the symbol of a small, kind deed is something we all can do. And the chance to give a cup of water can come our way several times a day. Like a simple greeting, how are you doing? An offer of help or a supportive word. In these pandemic days, we see examples of this over and over again. So one of the important messages of today's readings is that hospitality is central to our identity as followers of Christ. It isn't just a nice thing to do. It's not a, an optional, optional extra. It is at the very heart of the gospel. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, Jesus tells us. And when we welcome the stranger, we welcome Christ himself. My dear friends, in the final analysis, hospitality is not so much opening doors as it is opening our hearts. To close our hearts is to die. To open them is to begin to live. Now profess the great truth of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, the light from light, true God from the true God. The God from not be made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in honor of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and that's the Son of Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Have confidence in the Lord's goodness we now bring to him on needs and prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may God look graciously upon them as they continue to strengthen and give courage to those entrusted to their pastoral care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil leaders, may the God of peace and justice inform their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are alienated from God and his church, 
May Christ's message of love and healing penetrate your hearts and reconcile them to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, All of us here, may God restore in us whatever is necessary, fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the sick of our faith community, for members of our families who experience daily hardship, especially Rudy Whitehart, that they trust in the Lord's kindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for our beloved dead, especially Ellen Nolan, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Silently, we have our personal needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord we also pray for our bishop elect, Kevin Speedy, who will be ordained bishop on Wednesday next. So the Lord may bless him as he begins to shepherd the people of the Diocese of Hyderson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for listening to all the needs and prayers that we bring before you today. We know that you will answer them. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise and adds nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
O Son and the Highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this blood, we will proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Arthur, our Bishop, and Kevin, our Bishop-elect, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and the soul is coming. May the body of Christ keep us safe. Satisfied. 
let's just pray. May this divine sacrifice be offered and received. Fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank you. Good seeing you all. Good seeing you all. Thank you all. Have a very pleasant week.